pure simple. Everyone wants to be in the movies. Even Andrew Mitchell, the former government chief whip. He's best known for having resigned from the government in October 2012 over a bizarre argument with some Downing Street policemen, a process that's left him embroiled in high-profile legal proceedings. But back in the mid-2000s, when he was in the shadow cabinet, he put money into a high-profile film financing company, now best known for backing Avatar, the blockbuster. However, this week, HMRC, the tax collectors, controversially deemed that what he and his fellow investors had actually done was to take part in a tax avoidance scheme. Mr. Mitchell invested in a company called Ingenious Film Partners 2. According to its promoters, this was a vehicle designed to encourage people to invest in British film. But according to the revenue, it was a company that was designed to generate tax reliefs for its investors. The way that Ingenious Film Partners 2 works is a bit complex. So, say an investor put in the minimum £36,000. If they did that, Ingenious would then loan them £64,000 to invest, taking their total stake up to £100,000. That would then be used to buy shares in film productions, which, in their first year, ran a roughly £90,000 trading loss. Investors could choose to write that off for tax purposes. So what does that mean? Well, they put in £36,000 in cash and they get back roughly £36,000 in tax relief very fast. And now they own a £100,000 stake in a group of films. So long as the films make enough money to service the debt, Ingenious's structure allows people to invest without locking up a lot of their own cash. Now, serious films get financed like this. Ingenious Film Partners 2 backed X-Men, The Last Stand, for example. Along with some rather less grand names. Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties, and... Uh, How many potential husbands do you have right now? Three. Virgin Territories. Furthermore, the income received from these films is, of course, taxed. Ingenious says that its schemes have generated £1 billion of such income. It continued... There has been a major change of position by the government driven by a rather crude attempt to generate cash for the Exchequer in a wholly unfair and unjust manner. HMRC has failed to distinguish between commercial businesses and tax avoidance schemes and have, without proper consideration, deemed all film arrangements to be tax schemes. A tax tribunal called at Ingenious's request is now scheduled for November. Ingenious remains confident of the outcome. There are three big reasons why this has broader implications. The first of those is that this was an establishment investment vehicle. The company that runs the vehicle, Ingenious, is itself run by Patrick McKenna, a man who's advised the Labour Party on tax. And some of its other investors include Lord Grade, a former chairman of the BBC, and Lord Waldegrave, a former chief secretary to the Treasury. What may be about to happen could be deeply embarrassing for the three politicians, as well as potentially expensive. They may be among the first politicians to be caught in HMRC's new tax dragnet and anti-avoidance crusade. Tackling tax avoidance has become something of a staple of political speeches. Some of these aggressive anti-avoidance schemes that may not be illegal are morally questionable. I regard tax evasion and indeed aggressive tax avoidance as morally repugnant. So, HMRC has been given more resources to tackle avoidance, more powers, and has selected more targets. Practices that HMRC wouldn't worry about in previous years are now in their sights. We asked these investors how much they put in, how much they might need to pay back, or whether they'd already settled with HMRC. Mr Mitchell said, when the last Labour government introduced tax incentives to invest in the British film industry, along with many other investors, I did so through Ingenious Films. I resigned from Ingenious when I was in government, and I always pay all tax when due. Lord Grade and Lord Waldegrave both said that their intention was to invest in British film. The second reason why there's a broader interest in this vehicle is that investors in Ingenious Film Partners too may be among the first people to receive accelerated payment notices. That means that HMRC, the tax inspectors, can send them letters demanding repayment of the tax they think they should have been paying without going to court. 
This new process has been attacked as draconian. It adds new terror to investing in a scheme that HMRC might question. Ingenious Film Partners 2 was identified as a candidate for this process earlier this week. It's one of 1,200 schemes that are being primed for it. The law that allows it is expected to get royal assent and letters to start going out this week. The third issue is that pursuing alleged tax avoidance can cause political difficulty. The dragnet of 1,200 schemes is catching people who can ill afford to repay their taxes and are now angered that HMRC calls their long-standing business arrangements tax avoidance schemes. There is no appeal process. If you receive a notice, you must take advice immediately. Do not ignore it. Many people that receive notices will probably come out of the blue, and many of those people were probably missold the schemes in the first place. If anyone feels that they've been given bad advice or missold products by the advisors they've chosen, that's something that they have to take up uh, with the advisors or the, or the proper authorities. Uh, it's not a reason why they shouldn't pay the tax uh, that they owe. HMRC will, of course, still need to win cases in court. Even if they need to pay up soon, ingenious investors will get their money back if they can triumph there. In the short term, Mr Mitchell and tens of thousands of others may be waiting for a letter from the taxman.